Blog Talk Radio. Home of the stars. Through the airwaves and on the big screen. Coming to you live from Hollywood, it's Rated G Radio with your host, Garrett Miller. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting week of Rated G Radio. We're going to be having a, an Australian takeover in just a couple of moments with our very own Mary Lou Monroe Ray. She's going to be interviewing Rosie Shalhoub with the Festival of Dreams event in Sydney that's coming up this September. So we're doing some publicity for that ahead of time. But before I bring Mary Lou on, I want to give a special shout out to a bunch of people I got to spend Saturday night with and uh, just talk about a really cool event that I was able to lend my creative efforts to as a photographer. So I was actually behind the, the camera this time. I was invited by my dear friends Ken and Angela of Downey's Desserts here in Costa Mesa to be a guest at the uh, Nataline's Fashion Legacy 8 event with Hilda Sarkissian and her family putting on this fantastic event, 8th annual um, event that raises money and awareness for um, kids who want to go to fashion school. And I, I can probably say it in a whole lot better terms, but the, the end result is that they raised a lot of money at the Calabasas Mercedes-Benz dealership. We were up on the top of their roof and had fantastic food. Um, all kinds of celebrities were there. We had... Um, people from movies and TV, and it was a lot of fun. So I want to thank Sue Wong. She's an acclaimed designer. I want to t thank Hilda Sarkissian and her family, but most importantly, Ken and Angela of, Downey, of Downey's Desserts for the invite and the opportunity to go take some really cool pictures. So if you're looking for some pictures of the event, you might go to the Downey's Desserts Facebook fan page and check that out. I know Ken and Angela have been posting pictures um, since Saturday. And it was really, really cool to do all of that. But we're here today to really bring the world a couple of fantastic people. And Mary Lou, I'm going to introduce you first as my uh, partner in crime from Down Under and basically <laughs> turn the show over to you and say thank you very, very much for bringing Rosie here to the show. And have a great show. I'll be in the background here. If you need anything, just let me know. Okay. Uh, thank you, Garrett. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I don't know how warm it is over there, but it's cold here in Australia. We've had these incredible winds blowing across. And um, so I'm kind of rugged up here in my little igloo. <laughs> and um, I'm very, very happy to bring a beautiful guest on. She is the brainchild of the Festival of Dreams, Rosie Shalhoub, who is a psychic, a visionary, and an amazing dreamer and entrepreneur. So, Rosie, I'd love to introduce you. Welcome to Rated G Radio. How are you Thank today? You. Thank you so much, Mary Lou. That was just such a wonderful introduction. <laughs> oh, you're an amazing woman. <laughs> oh, I think you're an amazing woman. But there you go. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm very you. good. I'm very good. I'm just a little bit here in Sydney so I'm rugged up too. Yes we've had these chiller winds coming across so and it, where I live I'm out along a canal and there's a lot of yachts and I've been very blessed to be able to stay here um, before my next journey somewhere else um, but you could hear the wind um, moving through all the main masts and it was so eerie it just had this haunting sound of its own it was quite incredible the other night my poor little Tweety Pies were quite frightened I think <laughs> I got two little budgies mm. well, but anyway I few days in New Zealand and um, that was even colder so oh I know I know and we want to get to that story but before we start I want to read something that you wrote last year after the Festival of Dreams um, on a post you did at the end of 2014 in o October and I loved reading this so I'd just like to share this with um, our wonderful listeners so you wrote growing up the eldest child of five I learned at a very young age how to share. I had to share my toys, share my clothes, share my bedroom, and God forbid, I even had to share my parents. So you <laughs> see, sharing became a natural part of my world, and there's nothing more I would like to share with you today, my dream. We all have dreams, and I know dreaming was always such a natural place for me to be in. Even looking back at old school reports, my teachers would always say that I was a daydreamer. And to this day, I'm glad I didn't stop dreaming. I made dreaming a living. And now the dream is very much alive. I love that. 
That is so you, Rosie. You are so, that's and it is. It's about dreaming things into reality, manifesting yeah, well, our dreams. That, that sounded so good. Having somebody else read it. <laughs> well, you're the writer, my dear. But what an amazing concept. So please, just now the festival of dreams is held in September, from the 11th until the 13th, down in that's Sydney. Right. At, at the Hordern Pavilion. And so tell our audience, how did this brainstorm that you came up with all begin? How did this amazing event, which is huge, it's huge. And yet last year you had Lisa Williams, a very well-known um, international psychic as your special guest. And yeah. you've got these amazing exhibitors. So how did all this begin? What is the Festival of Dreams? Well, I'd like to take all the credit, but I can't because my partner, Ross, who is always in the background and I get all the limelight, he has he had a lot to do with this as well. But, um, you know, I never, ever planned to run festivals. That was not part of the dream. I, <laughs> I have a shop called Embrace, as you know, in Westfield, Miranda. So yes. when I took my lease with Westfield in 2010, they said to me, look, we want you in, in uh, we love your concept, but we want you in and we want you to run a mind, body, spirit festival. And I said to wow. them, I don't know how, how to do that. I've never done that before. <laughs> so Westall pretty much got behind me a little bit and we ran our first fe festival at the shopping centre and it was quite big. Um, okay. And so I ran basically three years in a row at the shopping centre. That, and we got we got quite a good name, and we had Western database, which was really good for us. And it worked, everything when it came back to my shop, so that sort of got my shop name out there. But last year, what happened mm. is that the shop essentially went under major renovation, and uh. um, we had no kind of festival. So it was my partner Ross, because I was just going to let it go and just say, "Oh, we'll just wait till the renovations finish and start it up in two more years." But it was Ross yeah. that said, no, we're going to do this, we're going to do it bigger and better and we're going out of the area and we're going to the Horton Pavilion. So for those of you who don't know, the Horton Pavilion is a massive, iconic um, building where we run, you know, huge events, concerts. I grew up there going to concerts and things like that. Um, everybody here in Australia knows the Horton Pavilion and it yeah. sort of went from there. Wow. So, yeah, and it is. You know, it's it's an amazing building too and um not only that um i believe that when the horde because the horden pavilion is quite um an archaeological uh concept there but i i believe jeff fennick it used to be used for boxing back in the day so and um the well-renowned boxer jeff fennick used to um box there as well they have, they have done everything there. It's part of our busy culture, that building. You're not a real Aussie mm. unless you know the Horton Pavilion. They used to even run our old Easter show um, in that area. And the Horton, I'm pretty sure it was the Horton or the building right attached next door to it where we used to go and get all our Easter show bags as children. Oh. Yes, yes, I, I remember reading something about it when I saw that. So that's a change out of the uh, boxing ring into the ring of creative fire, <laughs> bringing yeah. all these dreams <laughs> to life. Yeah. What a change. <laughs> but, you know, it was so funny. I was so disappointed when Wessel started doing the renovations. I'm like, oh, my God, how could they do this to me? You know, I'm going to not be able to do my festival. But it ended up being a blessing in disguise because it always, I would never. Yeah. I was so in my comfort zone to stay there. And it was just Ross saw the bigger picture and he had faith in me and it just went yes. from there. Wow. And and that's, um, I mean, it's such a huge event and you had such a lot of success last year. So how many people do you think um, – can you imagine coming this year? Once they already saw how big it was last year, how, how many people do you think you're expecting to come through this year here um, in Sydney? We're expecting um, between ten and 12,000 people. Wow, I um, think it'll probably yeah. be more. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm sort of thinking it will be, but I just think it's better to be, <laughs> yeah. to be on the safe side. But I do feel that there, there is going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah. 
so Rosie you you've been a psychic and visionary yourself as well as being this yeah. entrepreneur with your lovely partner Ross um, uh, he sort of does all the construction and management and oversees everything so I'm sure he just wears his hard hat all the time working oh, he gets the worst job he gets to be in charge of the finances and doesn't let us spend money so he's oh, actually, he with, with all the other girls on the team he's the one that's out, outnumbered and we just want to spend money and he's the one that says no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that must make you feel very powerful, Ross, if you're listening. <laughs> All these women <laughs> wanting to go charge it. He's in the background, so <laughs> cheeky green on his face. <laughs> I bet he is uh, amongst all these lovely ladies having that power. Oh, Ross. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see it and come down. So I'm sort of planning to get my flight down there very shortly. Um, but you, you've also been in the industry yourself for 25 years. And um, so what was your vision when you cre wanted to create the space, you know, to bring spiritual spirituality out and many light workers from obviously from all over the world? Um, yeah. It, so just what what is your dream? What is it you what is the message the Festival of Dreams would like to bring to the people that come in there? Well, the festival is definitely an extension of my shop. My shop is called Embrace. And yes. um, Embrace is, I, I honestly think it's the most beautiful store in the world. It's, I've it's seen all about embracing <laughs> every, Gorgeous. Every embrace I want to go. Everybody. Oh, you have to come down to it. You're so welcome. But it's about oh, embracing okay. everybody's religions, their cultures, their differences, their faith. And you can walk into that store and it doesn't matter what space you come from there'll be something there or what country you come from there will be something there we have a huge component of crystals there because I, I i'm so passionate since a little girl i love my crystals so we have crystals and um gemstones from all around the world but we also have i know religion is always a hot topic for people but it's not about it's not about that it's about walking in and if you're a christian you can find the holy bible if you're a muslim you can go in there and get the holy quran if you're a jewish mm. you can go in there and get books from the kabbalah you know, um, yeah. if you're a Hindu, you can get books on the different gods and goddesses, and it just goes on. You know, we've got a Buddhist section there. We've got everything. Like, it's just amazing. So it's been bad and breaking everything. We've been able to put it together so beautifully so that, mm. um, you know, no one takes any offence to it. And the festival really is just an extension of that on a bigger scale. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, and it's about faith, and I believe, you know, um, on a spiritual level, if I can use that word, um, to for people to connect with that truth within themselves. And whatever it yeah. is that awakens them or um, helps them to find that peace within themselves, because that's how I truly believe peace will be in the world is when we can find that peace within our own hearts and have that peaceful yeah. mind. And, you know, these events, I mean, 10, 20 years ago, you know, if you spoke about spirituality and tarot readings and things like that you know you you were either considered a fruit loop out of the pack or yeah. you know but now people and they didn't want to talk about it or oh you're one of those you know but now it's just yeah. opening up people are awakening i i feel um and embracing the diversity that we have and um the amazing different cultures that we have uh, in the world and the beauty of their beliefs and um, their ceremonies and, you know, their traditions or their costumes and their food and their music and dance. It's such a beautiful thing that I think, you know, the spirit needs to be able to express and music and, um, and food and you know, this expression of that spirit essence is what I think truly brings people together where they drop, you know, a lot of the prejudices and things. And, you know, most people yeah. just want to have peace and they just want to feel safe and, and um, you know, enjoy the wonderful different people uh, that they meet around the world. And these are beautiful places uh, in which you're able to do that and just observe and, you know, participate if you want to. So what an amazing concept that you're bringing. So Rosie, now you, sorry? 
So I was, it was very passionate to, um, for me to be able to do that. You know, yes. um, because like what you said, it, it, everyone is looking for something. It doesn't matter what it is. Because at the end result is always the same anyway. That's right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's said here about you that, you know, you come from a place of authenticity, courage and wisdom, and you're a true believer in the sacred feminine. With the roar of a warrior S, you're also a hopeless romantic living in a world of make-believe fantasy, humor and love. And Embrace actually depicts that as well. And, you know, I just, like I watched, clip when you were over in New Zealand freezing <laughs> and and what and we're so excited about being there which I'd like you to talk about shortly um, but you were jumping up and down I'm sure it was partly because you were cold but I just imagine that <laughs> your enthusiasm you're like this little fairy you know that was up there going yes come come and dream and come and believe and it was just so beautiful to watch I smile every time I I, I look at you oh. and I, I see the beautiful things that you write and you share yeah, oh, you're just a lovely lady, and what a blessing that you know you still that Ross believed you, and you still hung on to your dreams so that we could share this amazing festival this year. So yeah. you have some wonderful, wonderful international guests as one of your uh, main features. Could you tell us about the beautiful guests? That, and one of them was our recent guest here on Radio G Radio. So please yeah. uh, enlighten us as to these amazing two special international guests for us. Oh, we're just so excited. So we had the most beautiful Rick Mora. So I know he was on radio with you not that long ago. And yeah. he's Elsa Dagonal Gray. And mm -hmm. what an experience I've had with these guys over the past four days. I can imagine uh, that would have been. Uh, I looked at the photo of the two of you um, when, you know, as the Modi people do, when you connect sacred breath and spirit of each other. And it's like yeah. the, it's like the whale kiss, I suppose. Um, I know there's a special name for it and I can't think of it um, just now, but when you held, I, I looked at the two of you and I immediately, my heart just swelled and I had tears. I just could feel that special connection you must have shared. Uh, yeah. Must have just this last four days. I mean, you probably didn't want to come back, but I thought, well, you could always so Skype in from New Zealand, <laughs> Rosie, but you have this huge festival to do. Oh, so I'm tell so us that. Yeah, that, that happens when we go overseas and we come back because it's such an yeah. adventure and it's something new and exciting. But they will be coming here to Australia, which yeah. is and you know even what? better. I felt like such a young, innocent child every time I was around Saginaw. Yeah. I just had, I was in awe of him. Mm. Even just being in his presence, Mary Lou, I can't tell mm. you. People Stop and looked at us everywhere we went, and not because they recognised him from his Hollywood movies. It wasn't that. It was just he has his aura. He has his presence. Yes. That you can't he not does. stop and look at him. And mm. that's so. Oh, he's. I I had to hold hold back my tears when we were doing that, mm. but I broke down straight after because the the beauty of that was just so mm. incredible. Overwhelming. Yeah, oh, the love, uh, uh, and I've posted a, a photo up of um, Elder Saginaw Grant on my timeline, and it's he just has the innocence of a child, the wisdom of the elder, and these beautiful, loving eyes, and such knowledge, such it's so open yeah. and receiving, and and the native people are very beautiful people. Um, as are the Māori people as well, and, and many of us, you know, we we all want to. There's so many people out there spreading joy and love um, that's very much needed in the world. And a lot of the things I think where the chaos comes in, and um, you know, is a, a lot of fear-based thoughts because we've just had a lot pushed on us, I think, for a long time, and. A lot of those uh, thinkings just in those patterns just don't serve us anymore because the world really is changing. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, how do you see, you know, the world yourself? Like, do you think 
a lot of people are awakening since you started you know in your shop with these festivals do you know do you think yeah. it's a growing thing do you think it'll bring a lot of change by opening up these huge events for people i really really hope so i don't want to know that what we're doing we're doing this in vain because um i've noticed it you know i've always been psychic you don't just become psychic <laughs> i've always had that yeah. in me so since the day i was born but um, I did start working as as a professional psychic quite a while, long while ago, and then, mm. and like you said, nobody you don't talk you didn't talk about it. You don't go around saying to people, oh, "I'm a psychic," you know. You sort of try to find <laughs> another word for it. Um, and yes, it, you know, yes, I have what I've Um, but now, um, I mean, I've had embraced for five years, and we're in mainstream shopping centres, so we're not in an area where there's a lot of hippies or or people that are right into all this, into this stuff, or very spiritual people, we're just mainstream. And I've kept that shop yeah. open so that everyday people would feel very comfortable with the thing. It's a very pretty, yeah. very girly sort of shop. And I have noticed a huge take of, of new clientele coming through. People are really opening up now, and I think um, a lot of that has to do with the shows like Charmed and Supernatural. The X Files yep. when that first came out, that was still a little bit. I used to love. I was such an X Files fan, but um, you know, mm. Charms and Self was there. Oh, I can't remember all those shows. I never really watched any yes. of them. But they really did yeah. open people's minds up a little bit more. And what I have noticed is massive, um, massive increase in men coming in. You would never have yes. heard of that. I, when I read professionally, I don't read professionally anymore. I stopped reading when I felt pregnant with my twins nine years ago. Um, How amazing. Yeah, twins. It was always the women that had come in. And um, now we get so many men and all different types of men, doctors, policemen, tradies, local tradies will come in. Wow. And this was on her 10 years ago. So, yeah, yes. to answer your question, definitely um, times have changed and people have changed. I think they all know that there's, there's something. We need something. We can't keep going on in the world the way it's been going. Exactly. That's right. And, and yeah. the earth is certainly passing that message on to us with all the movement and activity and the changes that are happening around the globe. And... Um, you know massive natural disasters where people really do just you know she's vulnerable and so are we but she's got a very strong spirit and you know people need to be there to reach out for each other and you you tend to find when there has been certain disasters around the world people just drop everything and they just want to go and help and reach out yeah. and you know there are many changes coming and this will continue for quite a few years, I believe, but it is changing. The face of people are changing and they're starting to use their voice. And with um, the message, I think that Rick Mora and Elder Saginaw Grant, they are bringing a message of global unity. And I know they've got a very powerful um, event on this evening in New Zealand um, yeah. where you know, they're presenting um, a lot of their stories. And uh, so with this Native American show that they are doing, that, that goes for two hours at the Festival of Dreams. Uh, when does that yeah. run? If you can just explain so, that to people. Um, the festival opens at 10 o'clock and we have over 100 exhibitors all coming from different fields and modalities and faiths and backgrounds and um, you know, whether it be in the health and wellness industries or the spiritual industries or the, um, you know, physical as well. So we've got some fitness trainers and, you know, health gurus and things like that there. But um, we we decided, because we did make a little bit of a mistake last year, when we put Lisa's shows on, we did it while the festival was on. And what I found is that a lot of exhibitors didn't get a chance to go to the first TV event because they were, they were there, you know, manning their stands. And I also found yeah. a lot of people left the festival to actually go to the event. So we thought we'll do it after hours. So the festival runs from 10 to 6. And then yep. you can start an show on Friday and on Saturday are at 6.30 at night. That way, okay. you know, you yep. don't want a chance to come to the event. And on Sunday, the show actually starts at 
three, we didn't really get much of a choice in that one because yeah. um, Gordon the is just out of here by midnight to close yeah. up and everything. Yes, yeah. well, that'll be a lot of work, but I, I can help out with any of that. No problem there. <laughs> I'm happy to help. Oh, I'll be so excited to help. We were up so late and I was so tired last year. <laughs> it was the first job in the world. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cleaning. Yeah, it was the first job in the world. Yeah, it was the first job in the world. Yeah, I know. I have done different events, but it is a massive job. And so you have the dream team, the amazing dream team yourself, um, your, hus uh, your husband, partner, Ross, um, yep. who's the events coordinator. And you've also got Diane Masri. Hello, Diane. I know you're probably listening. Your um, social media yeah. events. <laughs> hey, Diane. That's what she sort of started off with, but she's like my right hand man now. <laughs> <laughs> Your wingman. She <laughs> changes every single day. I don't. Mean, she, um, I'm, I'm not very savvy on social media, to be honest. Um, I know the basics, but she, you know, she does all our social media, gets all that coordinated. She, she yep. makes calls for me, chases emails up for me. She chases, um. You know, she she knows loads of people, so she's been, out, especially in the Indigenous community, because we want to, you know, also um, be sacred to our Aboriginal elders. So she's yes, organising yes. that side of the event. So, um, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Plus, she helps with the embrace side of stuff too. So, yeah, <laughs> amazing. She's the one I ring at late at night. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, she's so <laughs> is it's like that movie, The Devil Wears Prada, <laughs> where the phone goes off all the time? Yeah, we understand, Diane. It's okay. You're doing a great job, and I'm sure Rosie is so grateful to have you on her team, oh. on the team. And then you've got Katie Rose Savvy. Yeah, she's your graphic designer, so she certainly yeah. knows, um, you know, your enthusiasm and passion, and and she designs. You know, she's been working with you now for seven years, so she knows the ins and outs of your ambitions and your goals. Hmm? So Katie um, has only been working on the festival this year, but we've yeah. worked together, and I think it is actually maybe more than seven. I have another thing okay. that nobody knows about, but I import Christmas decorations, and um, we put oh. um, them up. Yeah, no one even knows that. I forget about that poor little business. It's been going for 17 years old, 17 years um, now. And, you know, it's the Christmas balls that really got me financially set up to be able to do a lot of the things that um, wow. I wanted to do. But um, Katie's been working with me since she was about 14, and she's now 24, oh, wow. I think. Something oh, like that. Oh, you Katie? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, oh, she's just beautiful, and, and she she is the graphic designer, but then she helps yep. with phone calls and emails and invoicing and things like that too. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got a wonderful team. I call them the dream team, and then I saw on your website the dream team, and I went, well, I had that pegged right, so that's good. <laughs> oh, I have to update that. I don't think we've got Mika Buchan on there. I don't think she's on. Poor oh, Mika okay. She's our publicist. And me, oh. like, now this is the kind of woman that you say she rocks. She knows everybody and everyone. Um, That's Mika what you need. She's a celebrity in her own right. So anyone who knows, sees Mika will know her face instantly. She does loads of television work and presenting and things oh, like that. Um, yes. But she, you know, she came on as our publicist and now she's also doing more than what she's meant to do. So <laughs> everyone's just taken so much of this so passionately. And we've become yes. so close. We're like such a close family unit. It's crazy. Wow. crazy. Oh, but the, and but that's what brings it together. You know, when you're all working with the same vision, the same goal, and you're so excited because you know what's um, the result that that's going to have and the impact, that beautiful ripple effect. Because it's it's like when you go to a concert and everybody loves the concept or they love the band. Um, you know, you walk out there feeling elated and on a high, and that's yeah. that's what you guys want to create. I have yeah, no doubt. I, um, can I just say one thing quickly? We've also got Patricia D'Angelo who just came on board with us last week. 
So okay. she's volunteered her time. So I think she does oh. deserve a mention. Um, yes, absolutely. With, um, you know, chasing up exhibitors and um, she's got the worst job of the lot and she's and that's been volunteered. So I really do need to make a big acknowledgement oh. to her because she's come uh, as an uh, angel sent from up above right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, I'm sure there's many around too. So, and... Um, so when um, Saginaw and Rick present their show, um, Saginaw obviously is the voice of the of the past, and Rick is speaking then the voice of the future, and he connects with a lot of the younger people as well. He's doing something quite special with some of the kids down in Sydney. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so we work very closely with Youth of the Street. Ah, say that again, Ruby. Um, Youth of the Street, which is our yep. charity that we do in conjunction with our big kitchen. Now, I mean, I don't really need to say much about Youth of the Street. I think it says it. it I think the name says it all. But basically, yes. they get kids off the street um, that have come from horrific backgrounds and re rehabilitate them in a, in the kitchen um, and get them trained up to become chefs and baristas and oh. you know working in the industry so that anywhere they could go they could get a job. Um, oh wow that's amazing. We're going to get Rick to come down to the kitchen and do some cooking with the kids and oh, you know, fantastic. Them, yeah because Rick you know he comes from an amazing piece of story all in itself and he's not very shy to tell the story but I mean the statistics are is that he is a native um, American and, and look where he is he's now the most photographed man in the world yes um, yeah. some great name titled movies um statistics for a native american coming from you know a mother that had him at 14 and the, the background mm -hmm. of where of, of you know he shouldn't have been where he is he, he's open to saying that um yeah. but he did it he made his dreams come true so we think that he would relate to those kids a lot absolutely oh, no, sorry, the well, I think any of the youth in Australia um, and a lot of the kids that um, from the uh, youth um, that are in the streets that are homeless and, you know, a lot of the kids just sometimes they lose that hope and that faith. And when Rick came on the show in March here on um, Radio G Radio, we were discussing that and he's doing a film and he was asked a while back, do you believe and he said, I had no idea that in two, three years' time that would be the biggest message that this movie will bring out, which is called Little Boy. Now, I know it was released in April um, in America, but I'm, I'm hoping it'll come to Australia. And it really is about having that faith and that belief because they're the things that, that weave your dreams together and make them happen. Yeah, I've seen the shorts for that one, and it definitely hasn't come out here yet, but... Rick and I got to talk a lot about that movie and what he was telling me all about it. He told me how to watch it. I'll be in tears the whole time. It's yeah. like a kind of a tearbreaker. Yes. So uh, I think it's going to be... And, and people do want to have faith. They need to believe in something. And that's why it's so wonderful that you've put this um, together. So we people can... Now, you're selling the tickets for... Um, Saginaw and Rick for the Native American show. They're still you can get them online on the Festival of Dreams. Yeah. They're still available. Um, yes, that's the Festival of Dreams dot com dot au, and we've got our okay. early bird tickets still available um, until the end of this month. So it's not that far, and then they go up um, in price. But you know, it's so funny because now that I've got to spend time with Rick and Saginaw, and I'm it doesn't feel like a hard sell at all, but it's not about mm. us anymore. It's not about the festival. It's about people really getting these tickets for themselves because what I've experienced, I've come back a different person and and um, I, I just can't express enough how people, if they really want to make a change in their life, see a change, mm. work out how to do the change, they've just got to come and see these guys. Um, and that's just mm. it, you know. It's not about us anymore or the festival. It's really about the people that will be in the audience. And we're even yeah. um, considering giving out free free boxes of tissues because when you're once you're around, <laughs> yeah. I thought that we. 
Mm -hmm. oh, I can imagine. He, uh, yeah, I just look at his photo and I it brings tears to my eyes, and my my heart just immediately opens up, my heart chakra, and expands. It, you know, and um, I'm sure I'm going to feel the same way. I'm I'm very much hoping to be able to meet Rick and, and Saginaw because um, that's a beautiful connection. I would love to uh, and have the honor and privilege of of meeting them, well, especially after talking. So. Like Mary Lou, I will oh, definitely make sure that happens. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And you, I can't wait to give you a big hug, my dear. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're both of you. That's not happening in this lifetime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I really thought I'd come back off the plane. Thinking, oh my god, I've learned all this stuff on enlightened and as soon as we got back off and turned our phones on, all the problems started. Mom, yep. when are you coming home? Mom, <laughs> and then I didn't have to go sandwiches this morning and we're late for school and I'm like, Oh, have I learned anything from Saginaw? <laughs> yeah, but being a mum is a very important role. It is, it is. And family. And family is very important, of course. So what do, what do you think changed you in your life, Rosie, when you've had this experience with them? What do you think changed for you? I feel just being around him, there was some sort of, well, he gave us a blessing, but you could just feel that blessing without him even having to say anything. But just mm -hmm. listening to him talk, I mean, he's had incredible experiences in his life and um, he doesn't hold grudges. He doesn't. He doesn't think about mistakes in the past. He just lets them go. And I think yes. as humans, that's our biggest thing. He talks about depression. Depression mm. and anxiety are so different in our world right now. And um, he talks about how people are depressed because we think about the past all the time. And he makes it sound so easy. You just forget about it. That's mm. his answer. Just forget about it. I'm like, yes. oh, it's just that easy. <laughs> yeah. He's simple. He's simple. That, that's it is simple. Say. Yes. You know, he uh, about... uh, Sorry? No, go ahead. I was going to say, no, I wrote a book about it about um, back in 2010, and it, it really is. Like, I've always seen it as, um, you know, we've learnt from the past, and it remains in the past. The future isn't even here yet. It's not in form. It's about learning how to be very present. And it, in the now, as a lot of people, was saying but it because you can't it's the decisions I I believe that we make and learning how to be still and silent and going within to find that peace to find that clarity in those answers and just breathing in that life breath that that manner to yeah. really connect with yourself and I think that's what people have been struggling they've They've looked so much outside of themselves for answers when everything really lies within. And I think that's what the Native American people have learned yeah. to do is um, that's their way of life is connecting with the earth, with the land and all everything that surrounds them and yeah. um, being still and, and listening to that silence and the chaos is on the outside, you know, and it, it helps us to make those really good decisions for ourselves. So we really resonate with our own truth within and and we can exactly. make good decisions and create what we want in our lives for each other yeah, and as well a lot of that. you know he um he he talks about oh you, you've got no choice but to be still and silent around him because when he doesn't talk nobody talks in the room yes and then <laughs> it's a great and, presence and, yeah yeah so you, you learn very quickly to stay still and to be quiet <laughs> Yes, yes. I know he doesn't need a talking stick, <laughs> which is tradition. Is a lot of um, some nations or tribes sort of have a talking stick, so that whoever is holding the talking stick has pretty much the floor, and everybody must listen to what's being said and what's heard, because everybody has a right to use their voice and to speak. And then you can yeah. discuss it when it's your turn. It's it's a wonderful way. I think we should introduce that into Parliament sometimes because That's some of the slinging right. that goes on in there, I just have to turn it off. I go, oh, come on, you guys. And you're running the country? I'm like, oh, scary. <laughs> um, I've introduced the talking stick into our home with the kids, but um, it doesn't always work, but we're, we're getting there. <laughs> 
Yeah. So you just, just gotta silly. You'll just have to sit there with that that rosy sort of silence and like, oh, mum's not saying anything. So till they finally just be still and quiet and learn how to, how it is to be to be in silence. <laughs> They'll catch on. I'm sure you've got that look. <laughs> <laughs> so and some of the other wonderful guests you've got coming you know that are your um uh, dream guests super dream guests now you've got Ahmad Al Fayed's family who are descendants of the Salim tribe and they live in buildings and they've sort of been the guardians of this plateau um because they they've got views overlooking the whole plateau of Giza which is amazing. That's mm -hmm. where the pyramids and the Sphinx, the three pyramids are. So, wow, he must just have so much knowledge and history um, through their family. Been, um, Ahmed, early this year, he came to Embrace to do a talk. Um, so he's coming all the way from Egypt just to be a wow. special guest for us. And he was amazing. I mean, he's had all the talk about his culture and his, his Native American wisdom. This man talks about the Egyptian, ancient Egypt. So mm. he was fascinating. I couldn't get enough of him, to be honest. Um, um, yeah, so, he's, so we're really privileged to have him. Yes, yeah. Well, even Alana Fairchild, I mean, she's, she's also going to be there, the soul whisperer. A, mm -hmm. a spiritual channel and uh, and a guide and um i actually have alana's isis cards which is very connected to the egyptian ways and um our lovely friend tanya elizabeth a wonderful author that wrote the series tear of eternal grace um yep. you know she sang very much that even the fae was connected very much to the egyptians so it's just amazing how all these connections are coming together and so yeah. much is being learnt and revealed now. Um, so that, that's going to be amazing. And also you've got Ben Starr. So Ben's based in Sydney there with you and worked in radio for over 25 yeah. years. So with 2UW, Mix FM and 2CH. But he's also yeah. been a co-host on the Psychic Show with Fiona McCallum on 2GB. Is that right? That's correct. Ben's a good friend of mine, and I can, if I can just throw in about, um, he's launching his Marconi van at our festival. So okay. he's had this van built overseas um, for radio announcers, um, and they can rent this van out and take it to events instead of having to set their own stations up wherever they go. Oh, um, what a dream idea. So he's going to be doing radio interviews from the van at the show and he, and we're getting loads of radio stations coming to have a look at the van because it's being launched with us. So that's oh, very exciting. Yes, yeah. And and so it's being, is it being launched there at the festival? And he's having a pre-launch. Like the first the time? Yeah, he's having a pre-launch well, launch thing on Monday. We're going to be invited to that. Um, and then at the festival, it's going to be the first time it's been used and out there in the public. Wow, that'll be exciting. The Marconi Radio Rover. <laughs> well, I look that forward to that. <laughs> so I got oh. a history about Marconi and how he was the man that invented radio and, um, you know, there, there was a whole story there with Ben. So I'm going to make sure you two connect because I know you're oh, going really well. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to meet him. Yeah. yeah, I saw him interview you too on YouTube. That was a great interview. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> my hair was not good that day. Don't take my notice oh, you my look hair. stunning. You look That's stunning. And I love, I love the couch. So, yeah, he's got that set up. And I thought, oh, well, he's going to be here at the festival too. And then you've got Daniel Coates, an energetic healer. You have Debbie Malone, who's actually a very well, um, was voted Australian Psychic of the Year in 2013. And she actually works in with, um, you know, in television in Today Tonight. She's been in Sensing Murder, Sunrise, and On yeah. the One. And she assists the police sometimes in their cold cases as well doesn't she yeah, people don't know about that but she does charity work with the police so, and debbie and i go back about 25 years um, wow and she yeah we've been friends for a very long time before both of us became you know had our names out there um but she's just a really wonderful soul and a very soft 
natured person. I love Debbie. Yeah, a beautiful energy. And and then just looking down, there's um, Dr. Anita Heiss, is it? Heiss? Yeah. Heiss? Yeah. So she's won, yeah, she's won um, four Deadly Awards and for Outstanding Achievement in Literature and the Macquarie Pen Anthology of Aboriginal Literature. So she's um, representing her nation, the Wirra Jury P Nation. Yes, she yeah. um, she is of Aboriginal descent, and she's coming to represent our Indigenous um, culture here in Australia. And we, oh, we just beautiful. felt it, it, we felt it very appropriate. You know, we're bringing in the Native yes. Americans. We really needed to honour what we have in right. our land, our, our own land. Indigenous yeah. culture. Yes, absolutely. And it wouldn't be the same without the spirit keepers of the land from around. Um, you know, and I'm sure that. Uh, Saginaw and uh, Rick would be very honoured to meet um, any representatives that will be, you know, from the um, Indigenous people of uh, the Aboriginal people. Yeah. And so there's just so many wonderful guests. Greg Sellar, he's from the fitness industry. Then we've got Harry T, who is also yeah, Australia's best. top. He's a, he's yeah, a, he's your what? Here. He's my best friend in the whole world. Ah, <laughs> that's so cute. He was on the series, the one as well. So he'll be there, obviously doing some talks. Harry wasn't on the one. He was on. Um, he's been on. Um, Come join with me. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, and he's been. Oh gosh, I've just had a mental blank. He'll kill me. But um, he's been on quite a lot of things. <laughs> he was, he's been the first Australian chosen to go to Lilydale. For those who don't know, Lily Dale's in New York and it's the oldest spiritual community in the world. Yeah, She's yeah. And it, to be um, wow. asked to represent the country over there. So he got to oh, work fantastic. with Yeah, Lisa Williams, James Van Prague, you know, some of the really big names. So I'm really proud of him. Wow. Oh, isn't that amazing? Yes. And he, he was Psychic Ambassador for 2014. So, That's you know, it was certainly have a lot of stories to tell in the big old, uh, the big apple over there in NY. So, NYC. Oh, he loves America. I think we're going to lose him to the state. He's always <laughs> over there. He's oh, over to LA and then comes back here to Little Old Miranda and sleeps on my couch. So he goes, spends some time in Bel Air and then comes back to the freezing couch. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then you've got Stacey DeMarco, the modern witch, and a good friend of mine. Well, I had the pleasure of meeting Scott Alexander King, um, who's also a, a wonderful author. And, you know, he does a lot of the world. Animal Dreaming was one of his um, yeah. great books that he's written amongst uh, the Animal Dreaming Oracle Cards, which I have those as well. And, um, you know, he's got such a connection as well with animals and the spirit animals. And, um, you know, also aware of a lot of the indigenous culture uh, and Australian, you know, the Australian geography here uh, that he's um, so connected with as well and the wonderful things he, he does with the llamas and saving a lot of these beautiful animals. Yeah, and his wife and he... Loads and loads and loads of Scott's cards and books, and I know Scott really well, and he's just such a nice guy. Um, so he and he stands by everything he he preaches. So I have a yes. lot of admiration for Scott and his work. Yeah, yeah, and and we've also got you know Sacred Earth, um, the um, with Jethro and Prem Williams, who's just got the most divine voice that will be performing yeah. there. Um, a lot I, they travel a, around the world quite a lot. I have some of their um, albums, and they've got such a devotion for spirit and, and Mother Earth. So through the mantras that they sing, uh, you know, it it just can bring tears to your eyes too. So that'll be so beautiful to have them there. And and a friend of mine, Jason McDonald. We love Jason. <laughs> he does a lot of the shows up here in Brisbane. Jason. He Sorry? has a whole Hawaiian, everybody loves Jason, you can't not love him, but he has a whole Hawaiian Indigenous thing behind him yes. as well. Yeah, so that's right. He, he, his festival has really become 
um, a really indigenous sort of, yeah, uh, around the world. So um, I'm excited to unite everyone together, you know, even if it's just for the three days. But the conditions that come out have been enormous. Oh, I know. And it really is a lot about the old ways and the old traditions coming together to, you know, and we've all got that somewhere in our, in our history, you know, mm. um, that carries down to the DNA right through, you know, we've all been connected somewhere and can relate to many things. And a, a lot of people feel they're drawn to particular places in the world too, or certain cultures or so it's so wonderful that you're able to bring this all together in this huge festival of dreams because it really is about manifesting those wonderful dreams yeah. as well and, and right. seeing it there to learn more because there'll be speakers there's going to be their stalls where they're uh, connecting with people and you can have readings and wonderful food no doubt and all sorts of things happening there and there's lots of uh, entertainment that's what um yes you know that's what i love we're being able to offer loads of entertainment there's like about i think something like 80 to 100 workshops that'll be happening for all three um wow yep yeah, there's so many i'm putting the schedule together diane and i've been putting the schedule and we're trying to work out when we can have oh, our yeah. lunch break because there's so many um, <laughs> that we want to go and sit in. <laughs> um, and, you know, even on the open stage, we've got some massive names on the open stage. That's all for free. And we've got heaps of entertainment, so we'll keep that one as a secret. But last year, we, you know, we had magicians roving around and we had we even got the Hare Krishnas coming in and... Um, just roving around and chanting and just bringing atmosphere into the place. Oh, that sounds absolutely me. I can't wait to see it. So it really does, you know, nourish your soul with your magic and, you know, and and embrace your shop and this Festival of Dreams. You're really the leader in um, this new age spiritual with your inspirational products and the things that you're putting together. And you, even in your store and embrace, um, you actually have a lot of the psychics that come and do readings there. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have um, we have um, free reading rooms that get busy every day, um, mm -hmm. and we have some beautiful. All our psychics are just beautiful. They're all very humble. None of them come from an ego space, and and once mm -hmm. again, we you know we're a big family at the shop, so yes. everybody looks after everyone. Yeah, well, that is that is your your you saying. You know, when you meet the Embrace family, you know you are a family, not just working together, but you eat, play, and cry and laugh together, and nobody ever really wants to leave if you work there. So. <laughs> Sounds like a wonderful place. I'm going to pop in now and say hello to Ivana because she's our manager and she's just been doing such a wonderful job. So I haven't been in the, in the shop for about a week we've been away so i thought i'll pop in now and i have to be back by three to pick the kids up but i guarantee you i'll be right there till about one minute to three <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way <laughs> and and so at the shop you provide what 30 minute and hour long readings every, every day of the week yes we do um and we can do side reading so if anyone in the states is listening to us and they want to have a um a reading with one of our psychics, we can we can organise that over the phone for you. They're half hour readings and they're seventy five dollars. And I can really put my name to every single one of our readers because um, we just don't get anyone and every anyone to work there. Yeah. So you've got a link That's for um, and just to, from, from the state side, yep. real quick. If you make sure to give Mary Lou that link or send me the link on that, Rosie, I'll be glad to promote that over here for you too. And I'm going to be quite. We got about five minutes left, but I'd, I'd be happy to share okay. that with our listeners. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Well, if anyone has a pen now, it's www.embraceaustralia. A M B R A C E Australia, all one word, lowercase. dot com. dot au. And I'm pretty sure um, when I went to the site there, it shows everything that. The shop offers and also the connection to the Festival of Dreams. So that's www.festivalofdreams.com.au. Is that correct, Rosie? That's right. And they can check out all the guests there and learn more about who else is there and what's happening. 
where the address is. So in the Horton Pavilion, Entertainment Quarter, One Driver Avenue in Moore Park. So I don't, I haven't been to Sydney for quite a while, so I'm going to find my way around there. And it's running from Friday the 11th of September, Saturday the 12th and Sunday the 13th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. And don't forget, you know, to the tickets are on sale now for the Rick Moran Elder Saginaw Grant Show uh, for general admission. And there's general admission for at the door, $25 at the door and $20 online. You can save 20% if you get your tickets now. Don't miss this amazing event. And so, Rosie, it's just been such a pleasure to have you today. I know we've only got a few minutes left and you know so what what would you what was what is it that you would like to just sort of pass on to people um who are maybe just opening up to this uh thing when they come to the festival you know what would you say it's a huge event so where you know will they find their way around a okay? is there a map is there some things that you would suggest that they they look at yeah. We, we, will have, we will have all the schedule up on the website in about two weeks. We're just finalising all that now. Um, and okay. there'll be a map and everything when they get in there. But uh, the only thing I've really got to say to anyone about coming to the festival is you just come to see Saginaw and Rick. Saginaw yeah. will just change your life. That's all I can say. Mm. Oh, that's so beautiful. And have you got that amazing... Embrace chandelier, that huge chandelier. That was amazing. Oh, I saw a photo of that. Is that going to be there? I want to see that. <laughs> that chandelier would definitely be there. I have to fight so much for Ross to get that chandelier back, but it looks like I won the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> they had so much trouble getting it up, and I was, I, you should have seen me. My heart sunk every time it fell a little bit. But, um, yeah, no, it'll definitely be there. I think they've worked out how to get that back up properly now. Yep. They'll be experts now. Yeah, that's right. And you've got Ross there who'll be monitoring and supervising that. And I'm sure you'll be there too. Yeah. <laughs> brother Joe, the poor, poor Uncle Joe gets thrown into everything. And he, um, he, he ended up spending three days doing everything, all the technical side and stuff. So... You know, it's so funny how it became a family thing. All the family got involved with everything there. Oh, as it does. But what a beautiful thing that you're presenting. So I just want to say thank you, you know, so much, Rosie, for being a wonderful, wonderful guest. I am so excited to come to this event. So people, if you don't know about it yet, please get onto the website for the Festival of Dreams. Now, you're also on Facebook. You have a Facebook page. The Festival of Dreams is on Twitter. Just um, Google the name and it'll take you straight there. And Rosie, you've got your own entrepreneur page now that you've started, which is lovely to see because you just are this amazing woman and the dream team. Mm -hmm. And there'll be lots of things that, you know, you'll be posting up, no doubt, from now until the festival starts. So, And um, I'm sure there'll be more things on YouTube for people to, to find out and everything that's happening around uh, in Sydney and that's going to be connected to the Festival of Dreams. So check out these wonderful psychics and these amazing guests. I'll be posting things up on my page. So stay tuned, everyone. And again, thank you, Rosie, for being such a lovely, inspirational dreamer. You know, I think you have brought a vision and a beautiful festival to help people find their way and to see just the beauty that surrounds us, you know, in the world and what's available through everything Mother Earth offers to us, through the crystals, through all the magical energy that surrounds us, that really is around. You just have to be present to enjoy it. So thank you so much. Thank so you. wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Mary Lou, thank you, Rosie. You guys were great. I, I, you sounded great. I can't wait to be part of this. And Mary Lou, um, I, thank you very much for being here. I'm going to tell everybody to make sure to tune in Wednesday because, Mary Lou, you're doing another takeover yes. with Amanda Gore for the Joint Project. Oh, yes. She's an amazing keynote speaker, a motivational speaker, an author. Amanda, and that's so all we funny. to say about Amanda, though, because yep. we'll have to come back for Wednesday for that. Tomorrow, yes, everybody. Sorry, Mary Lou. That. 
for on That's tomorrow's okay. show, we have Margot Ray top 10 billboard recording artist. She's going to be premiering her new single, Never Too Late. And that is on Tuesday's show. Thursday, we have Rick Caradas and Nadia Ginsburg just confirmed during the show. Nadia is famous for doing her Madonna impersonations and has a great web series, The Madonna Logs. You can watch that. And on Friday, we have Shauna Burns premiering new music on the Friday Night Dance Party. Everybody have a great night. Don't drive distracted, and we'll see you live on Tuesday. You've been listening to Rated G Radio.